Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for being with me today. Uh, it is a, a beautiful day of the Gold Coast in Queensland. It's sunny. Uh, it's a clear blue sky, uh, and the uh, Pacific Ocean is looking very, very blue. So I hope it's as nice where you are. Uh, okay, so let's see what we've got. Lots of people here today. It's wonderful. Uh, Anthony from uh, Sydney. I know him. George, well, since we've seen you. Uh, Greg is a uh, wealth manager from Colorado and Texas. Uh, the other Greg, Greg Palladini, is with us today uh, and delighted to have you all here. Uh, Joe is with us. Uh, Leah, Leah is with us. Oh, Leah, good to have you with us, mate. You might have finished your farming uh, work now, have you? Uh, Mark L is with us. Uh, Mark, I owe you an apology. You wrote to me uh, about eight or nine days ago and I haven't replied, uh, but I've read the uh, email and I thank you for that. You're a wonderful supporter supporter, and I'm most uh, grateful. Miles is with us. Uh, plenty of uh, Peters are with us, uh, including Peter Mack, who is not a day trader. <laughs> Let's see where else we've got. Lots of uh, Vicky's with us. Wonderful to have Vicky with us. Uh, and here we are. There's a few coming in late. A few coming in late. Here we are. Just Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. No, not here yet. Uh, I am uh, looking for a gentleman called Tommy Lewis uh, who writes to me and uh, uh, I reply and um, the my emails are not being delivered. They're being blocked for some reason by Yahoo. Uh, and he said he would be here for today. So I want to make sure uh, he you hear this, uh, Tommy. Uh, I have been replying to your emails, but your web server or someone is blocking them. Uh, write to me again, please, my friend, with a new email address, if you would. Uh, that would be grand. Okay, how's the volume, uh, guys? Can you all uh, hear me all right over there? Somebody please just type in the question box if you can uh, hear me and all right. Give it a few seconds. One, two, three, one, two, three. All good, Mark. First, first round to you. Thank you, mate. Appreciate that. Good to hear. Well, what a what a what a monster of stuff we've got to talk about today. We've had some uh, pretty sensational trading, and some of it's been pretty wild, hasn't it? Uh, so let's uh, move on. Uh, and <laughs> here we are. Good to have all of you with us, folks. Uh, okay, so. Uh, Let's see what the word's going to be. Here we are. See if this can work. Yes, the, and the website, the pages are changing, aren't they? So that's good news after a debacle a month ago. So as you know, markets are rational, orderly, uh, and sometimes predictable. Uh, and markets are your friend. I know most of you are scared, scared to death of markets, but you don't need to be. Markets exist to give you health, wealth, and happiness. And if you get wealth and happiness, your health will improve, I promise you. And the simple answer I talked about uh, at a recent webinar, you are either trained or untrained. Uh, if you're not trained, you're going to lose money. Uh, and if you're not trained, email me and I will teach you how to trade. Uh, and uh, I will show you uh, what I believe is the best trading system in the world by a long, long way. So today we're going to talk a little bit about GAN. Uh, and um, uh, he was a, 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 a W.D. Gann was a Chicago uh, broker you know, in the old Board of Trade. Um, and uh, he was a prolific writer. Uh, he wrote books. He wrote uh, studies. He uh, wrote reports. He just published a massive, massive amount of material. And a whole lot of that's been picked up. Uh, by various people who uh, claim to understand the secrets of GAN, um, and they teach it. Uh, and some of them teach it for a whole lot of money. I was talking to a client yesterday who was just uh, recovering after paying um, a gentleman in America uh, $25,000 for his master's course on GAN, uh, and uh, uh, he reckoned he got absolutely nothing out of it. He's certainly uh, not making any money trading. Uh, so. Gann has become a huge figure uh, in uh, trading, uh, and because he's left so much material, many, many people have picked through it and 
claims that they can understand the missing link and this, that, and the other, and written commentary on it, promoted it with uh, uh, videos, with uh, uh, seminars, you name it. It's it's a continuing thing. Now, there's there's a bit of uh, uh, a dispute um, about GAN. Um, uh, Larry Williams, who I you know personally, is a very fine chap. Uh, he uh, has posted uh, on the website uh, that um, John Gann, who is WD's son, uh, is working for a broker somewhere or other, <coughs> a fairly <coughs> uh, not important broker, um, and uh, uh, and who am I thinking of now? I'm telling the same story the right way, I hope. Yes, I hope we are. So he was asked uh, by Larry. Uh, you know, uh, your father left uh, $55 million in an estate. Uh, why are you working for a broker? And John said, well, it's just not right. He said his father never made enough money to support the family by trading. And he made uh, all, all the money that they did have, uh, which was not a super amount. Uh, but from selling these courses, selling these programs, um, going around giving live uh, seminars. Uh, and there's no doubt at all, it's a man who's, dedicated his life to markets. There's no doubt at all that he has an incredible knowledge about markets, including options. He did a lot of work on options. Uh, but uh, this uh, issue lingers that uh, his son says, no, he, he never made enough money to support the family from his trading. Uh, and then uh, others who have a vested interest in it, I guess, say, well, that's not right. He obviously did. He must have made a lot of money, uh, got all of these various um, uh, testimonies from uh, various uh, folk about how uh, well he did, uh, but uh, you can uh, you can accept one answer or the other, and essentially it doesn't matter because uh, what does matter is Gans left this massive amount uh, of material behind uh, for you to study if you're interested. Uh, and I have clients who are deeply, deeply invested in Gan, uh, and. Uh, won't, won't hear any word of criticism uh, about them. So uh, I won't make any word of criticism because uh, I was a GAN fan myself for uh, six or seven years and in a big, big way. Um, and what was kind of interesting about GAN is his secret passion uh, was horse racing. Uh, when he was uh, not in Chicago, he'd go to uh, Florida uh, and uh, go to the races. He liked that a lot. Um, uh, but uh, as part of um, his uh, promotional work, uh, he would say, uh, if you are worthy, I will tell you the number. And this was supposedly the secret number that was the vibration of all markets. Um, and uh, if you were worthy, which presumably you spent enough money buying his various courses, he would tell you that the number was seven. And that's the first part of Gann's conundrum, because it's not seven. Seven is wrong. The vibration of all markets is 6.21. Uh, and those of you who've done a tutorial know that uh, we have um, uh, 104 missing uh, bars uh, on all our charts uh, for weekends. Uh, I shouldn't say all of our charts, almost all uh, Bitcoin and uh, uh, Ethereum, uh, they uh, futures contracts trade seven days a week. Um, so uh, we have 104 uh, days for uh, weekends. And we've got another 12, 13, is it 14 maybe, with the new holiday, the, the uh, market holidays, the federal holidays um, in the US. Uh, so uh, that gets to pretty close to 32%. So basically, we've got one bar in three missing that's just not on our chart. So essentially, what we are trying to do uh, is take uh, 365 days of data, uh, because uh, data goes on uh, whether the markets are open or not, it's still uh, working its way either up or down somewhere, um, and we're forcing that into 255 trading days. So we should have a systemic error of about 30%, and we don't. Uh, the market manages in its um, amazing, miraculous ways uh, to overcome that. And uh, uh, pretty much uh, you'll see as we go through, and most of you know, these numbers uh, 
once you have the right vibration, uh, are, are quite incredibly accurate. So that was the first part of uh, Gann's conundrum. Uh, Gann was also very much involved uh, with a gentleman whose uh, nom de plume was Seferial. Uh, his real name was Walter Gorn Old, uh, and uh, he was an Englishman. Uh, and he was an eminent English theosophist, a theosophist, I think you say, he did it that way, uh, well-known and respected astrologer. Uh, and he was all, also uh, into numerology. Uh, and uh, he was a mentor to Gann. Um, and when you read Gann's writings and you come to those passages that say, nine is an important number, 11 is an important number, 14 is an important number, 15 is an important number, and they go on for lines and lines of numbers. What that is, is Gann's uh, uh, interest in numerology, uh, which he shared with Seferiel, uh, who, as I say, was his uh, mentor. Interesting thing about Seferiel, uh, it's easy to sort of uh, shove him off as a, a, a you know, a gone in the head uh, situation, but Later in life, he actually got a job as the turf correspondent, the racing correspondent for the Times of all newspapers. Um, and what he was doing is he was handicapping uh, the races based on the uh, on numerology, well, what barrier it hit, what uh, saddle cloth number it had, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and he must have been pretty good at it uh, because he had that job for a number of years. Um, all that, those of you who are interested in uh, gambling and betting. Um, that all that's written by uh, Seferiel in his book, The Silver Key. And there are many, many books. Like Gann, he was a prolific writer, created masses and masses of material. Um, and <coughs> um, uh, part of it uh, was uh, his uh, gambling, his betting method. Uh, rather interesting. Uh, but uh, he was a very influential person on Gann. <coughs> and uh, he was a, a Freemason. Um, and Gann... Uh, got very involved with Freemasonry. In fact, Gann was so involved with Freemasonry that he was awarded the highest degree that a Freemason's Lodge can award. And I think if I've, my recollection is correct, it's called the 22nd degree. Uh, is, and that degree is awarded for uh, great and outstanding service to Freemasonry. Um, so uh, when you're reading Gann's stuff, don't forget that. So you'll come across a lot of the time uh, where he's using uh, threes uh, uh, on his um, uh, angles. As you know, the basic number was uh, 1 to 1 or 45 degrees. Uh, and then the next number along the sequence was uh, one, 3 and 1 or 1 and 3. Uh, one went up and then they both could go either up or down. And it meant that uh, for every uh, unit of time that passed, uh, you would add 3 uh, unit of upside price action or vice versa if it's going down. So uh, the uh, use of tree of three, it's called the trine, T-R-I-N-E, um, and it's a ratio that you don't see in futures. Uh, I've hardly ever seen it in the futures or a forex uh, chart, but it's very, very prominent uh, on anything that has... Um, a European flavour about it. It's a bit like the 70 cycle, uh, which is very pro-Euro. Uh, and uh, you pro anything with a, a, a touch of uh, Europe in it. Um, so, um, uh, one of the uh, major points that, that Seferiel wrote about at length was uh, the, uh, the dark moon. Uh, and uh, it was uh, black enough to be invisible most of the time. Um, and uh, Seferiel calls it <coughs> Lilith. Uh, and I've actually uh, written for you or spoken to you in a webinar about uh, Lilith and the Dark Moon. Uh, so he's an interesting character. So um, the major part of uh, Gann's work uh, involves these angles. Um, and angles are very important because every angle uh, at every point, point, point has a measure of time and a measure of price. And his basic angle uh, was the one by one. In other words, that's a, a market that went across one unit in time and up one unit in price, or across one unit in time and down one unit in 
price. And that line is called a one by one. And basically it's a 45 degree angle uh, up from the horizontal or down from the horizontal. Uh, these uh, angles of GANs were uh, alleged to work both ways. Uh, the next most common one he used was one by three and he also used an eight by eight by one was the extreme uh, level. Now, there's a whole massive trove uh, of these angles on various charts. Um, and uh, when I was a big GAN fan, I was buying a whole lot of them. I had a massive collection of these charts. And the first thing you'll notice is they're pretty much approximate. They're not particularly accurate. Uh, they're just uh, there, I guess, to give you a feel. But the point is that GAN was recognizing early on that price on its own was not an adequate description of what the markets do and why they do it. So uh, he incorporated into his teachings time. And whenever you look at an angle, you're looking at a uh, series of points that have measurements both in price and in time. Uh, and that is the great strength of GAN that he recognized that. He never got it to work in my opinion. Now, I just have my own personal opinion. Other people can think otherwise. <coughs> but I was a, a great GAN fan for many, many years. And back <coughs> uh, before uh, 2000, I'm going to say, um, might not have been uh, times, I moved around a, a fair bit on to escape me. Uh, anyway, I was introduced to uh, futures trading uh, by uh, Mickey D's sister, who might be with us here today. Uh, oh, Bianca's just joined us. Hello, Bianca, good to have you. She's doing a uh, tutorial at the moment. Akshay, I want to talk to you, mate. Would you please uh, send me an email? Uh, and I want to talk to you about finding some brokers in India. If you could do that for me, I'd be uh, most grateful. Andre has joined us. Uh, Anthony DD has joined us. Good on you, mate. Glad to have you with us. Uh, let me go back a little bit here. I'm just trying to find. Bianca's with us. That's grand. George Tower's with us. Yeah, all the Gregs, all the Gregs, more Gregs, Joe. Joel Goldman from Vero Beach, good to have you with us, mate, of course. Uh, Mark L, Mike. Oh, uh, Partha has joined us, good to have you with us, Partha. He's doing a tutorial as well. Uh, Peter's with us, all the Max. Uh, uh, Sean's with us, good to have you with us. Todd's with us, uh, grand to have you with us. And of course, Vicky, always delighted to have ladies with us. And we've got two today. Uh, we've got Vicky and Bianca, we're doubly blessed. Okay, uh, back to uh, the webinar. Uh, safety in the market and the spinning wheel. Well, I was introduced to uh, futures by uh, Mickey D's uh, sister. Uh, that's how long we've known each other. It's been a long, long time. Um, and uh, uh, the advertisement that uh, she found and showed me was uh, for this course, Safety in the Market, uh, founded by David Bowden in Australia. It's still running. He's still running GAN courses. Um, and uh, in about 1995-96, uh, I paid $23,000 for a two-day seminar uh, from Mr. Bowden in Noosa. Um, and uh, what I got out of that uh, was uh, the spinning wheel uh, and a branded wall clock. Uh, the wall clock was very nice. It's disappeared over the years. Uh, but the spinning wheel, uh, it was actually given to us as part of the curriculum that it was printed out uh, one of these GAN wheels where the numbers just keep building up on a sequence and, and they go from the center of the wheel all the way around and around and around, each, each circle getting wider and wider uh, until they run out of space. Um, and uh, we were asked to cut that out um, and stick it on a piece of cardboard. Um, and there was also a big red arrow uh, with this particular uh, thing that was provided to us. And you were asked to cut out that arrow. Uh, and stick it in the center with a thumbtack so that the wheel would spin around all these numbers. Now, uh, Bowden was very into the uh, share price index in Australia, the Australia's equivalent of the S&P, if you like, or the, the SPY, the share price index. Um, and uh, here he was happily spinning this wheel on the one he had uh, and coming to all these numbers, which uh, he thought were terribly, terribly interesting. Um, and I was sitting there watching 60 grown uh, mainly grown men, a few grown women, not many, 
uh, watching this wheel being spun around and pointing to random numbers and oh that's important and that's important and of course what that sort of thing is based on was Gann's love of numerology uh, but Gann understood a bit about numerology and uh, I don't think safety in the market understood much about it at all. Um, so uh, we got the uh, spinning wheel uh, and I mean if you think that's silly, um, you know, keep thinking about it because silly was me. I'm think, thinking this might be something I just don't understand how they're doing it. Uh, but these guys know what they're doing, so it must be fantastic, uh, which I guess, you know, is what marketing's all about. Uh, and there's no doubt that Gann uh, was a brilliant, brilliant marketer. Uh, and uh, David Bowden uh, is a brilliant, brilliant marketer. And many of the people who are good in this business are brilliant, brilliant marketers. Um, uh, not me, but I'm, I have no marketing experience or background at all. I'm a lawyer. Um, but uh, as a part of all of that uh, wonderful two days in Noosa, a beautiful part of the world in Queensland, a little bit north of where I am, um, I met uh, the lovely Joanne, uh, who was uh, representing the Lambert Gann Company. Uh, and they had the franchise for all of uh, Gann's work, and uh, uh, they were flogging it. Uh, charts, uh, courses, books, anything relating to GAN. Uh, they had it and you could buy it. In fact, one of you who watched my, uh, these webinars uh, wrote to me some time ago. He, he was a broker, I think, he's a retired broker. And he was telling me that uh, uh, he knew the uh, gentleman who's now bought the Lambert GAN company <laughs> not so long ago. And it took uh, two large. Um, semi-trailers worth of uh, product being delivered to this uh, chap's uh, ranch somewhere or other down in uh, southwest I think. Uh, very kind of him let me know that. Uh, but boy uh, Lambert Gann that was their job sell Gann product and they're very very good at it. I can tell you if Joanne ever went and built a great big mansion on the waterfront somewhere for mega millions you can bet that most of the money came from me. I was hooked entirely on GAN. I was into it in a big way. I thought it was marvellous. I had the GAN, GAN bug. And in the process, we actually got a phone hook up uh, with the US broker for um, uh, safety in the market, uh, who's a gentleman called Ken Gerber. Now, remember that name because you're about to meet Mr. Gerber uh, again uh, in the uh, very near future. Uh, so, Sometime in 2004, I made contact with Ian Jensen and Jensen had worked for GAN and took over production of the GAN calendar uh, after GAN retired. Uh, and I got hold of him eventually, he was still working as a broker, he must have been a good age, I'll tell you. Um, and uh, I said to him, I'm, uh, you know, a uh, big admirer of Mr. GAN's and going through all his books and his charts and trying to learn everything and, and I can't one of the things I can't work out and there were many but I only latched on one uh, was uh, his um, trades in um, Union Steel Corporation and um, don't correct me if I'm wrong it's many years ago but uh, there's a portion of the of, of Gans writing he talks about Union Steel his favorite stock and he had perhaps 180 correct calls out of 223 or something like that. Um, and um, uh, anyway, so I got hold of Mr. Jensen and I said that uh, uh, I couldn't understand uh, what Gann was, how he was calling these turns. Um, and uh, I wanted uh, to uh, talk to Jensen about Gann. And uh, I said, if you'll, uh, I'd be happy to pay you 10,000 US dollars if you would talk to me for 20 minutes. Well, uh, that was a long time ago. That was 20-something uh, years ago, I can tell you. 10,000 US dollars was a bit of money back in the day. It still is today. Uh, but he said, oh, yeah, that'll be great. Uh, no trouble. Uh, but pay me first. Uh, and he sent me his bank details. <coughs> and I paid him. And the appointed day came and I called him. And he was still working as a broker. Um, and he started immediately to give me a hustle, as good brokers do. Oh boy, have I got a deal for you. IBM options, absolutely wonderful. I said, no, no, I don't want any of that. Uh, I want you to tell me how Gann did this. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to tell you what he told me uh, because it's hearsay at best, but I can tell you that was the end of my love affair with all things Gann um, and uh, ramped up my search for the Daniel Code. And I had so much of this paraphernalia which had cost 
thousands and many thousands of dollars. I didn't even have room in my own garages. I had to lock, rent a lockup. I had to store my Gantt charts, courses, and paraphernalia and everything else. So uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, my experience with Gan. Uh, the uh, biggest problem with it being uh, that it didn't work for me. Now, that's not to say it doesn't work for other people. Um, I have my views uh, and I've moved on from it. But Gan uh, created, really, uh, you know, he's known for his uh, supposed trading and his work with uh, angles and charts and books and time cycles and everything else. What he really did, in my view, the thing he really deserves to be remembered for, is he was the first one to teach trading to his clients. And what he taught all other brokers in the United States was if you educate your clients, the more they know, the more confidence, uh, confidence they'll have, the more they'll trade, which is the uh, broker's lifeblood, you know, uh, clipping the ticket every time you buy or sell a product. So these angles of, of charts from GAN, um, they had elements of both time and price. All, all, all angles have t elements of time and price at any point. But GAN angles are rigid and arbitrary. They don't move with the market. They're set at those angles and then you're looking for the market to move in and recognize them. And that's not a good solution and a much better solution to understanding time is to let price contract create the ranges and then measure from each range so that the chart itself is setting support and resistance but in a special way and how it shows you it's doing that is target recognition and target recognition is everything uh, i've talked about target recognition so much over the years i'm sure uh, all of, almost all of you will know about that, uh, but uh, in case any of you don't, uh, we set a very strict limit on uh, these angles that we use, which are all uh, mainly their horizontal angles there. Uh, they start off at vertical angles, that is the angles of time, uh, and then we simply take them with no adjustment and we put them on the charts as horizontal angles, as in other words, markings of price. Now, that will only work if time and price are the same thing. And they are. Time and price are the same thing on different axes. And to prove that statement, you can go to the Daniel Code website um, and uh, click on the link that says um, Chart Archive. And you will see in there over 40,000 charts that I've created uh, since the website went uh, public in late 2007. Um, and they're all there and they're all tabbed by date. You will be really stressing things to see if you can find a market that's ever turned anywhere except the Daniel Code ratios. So go through that exercise, have a look at those charts, prove this for yourself. That's always the best proof. So <clears throat> what we can do then, uh, if we set a parameter for target recognition, and we do, and what we say is that target recognition is valid at the bar high low or the close within 0.1% of the price level that uh, has been found by Daniel Code. Not 1%, one tenth of 1%, 0.1%. So we're making that very tight. And it's actually very, very hard for markets to do that. Um, and uh, I see it all the time and you should too if you're not. Uh, subscribe to uh, members charts uh, it's certainly worth your time uh, to understand that <coughs> these <coughs> things are recognizable uh, that we understand them um, and that the market will uh, find it from there so uh, in the story of GAN versus Daniel Code uh, I'm going to share with you now the story of Kenny G Kenny G of course is Ken Gerber uh, who was the broker, the US broker for safety in the market that I told you about some time ago. Uh, so uh, what happened is many, many years had passed, uh, and uh, by that I mean, well, more than 20 uh, years had passed, um, and uh, I was contacted by uh, Ken Gerber, uh, who uh, didn't ring any bells with me, uh, 
um, but he had been referred to me by Jim C., uh, who will look at this uh, webinar later tonight. I hope you're feeling well, Jim, uh, and your wife as well. Give her my best regards. Um, and uh, Jim is a long-time GAN fan. He's a devoted GAN fan. That's the only way of putting it. And he's been working on GAN theory and GAN trading for, to my knowledge, at least 30 years. Uh, and uh, you can't shake him on it, even when I tell him my, what I thought of GAN uh, and uh, the experiences I had. Uh, he, he loves GAN and he believes that it's the answer to all things. Uh, so Jim had done a Daniel Code trading tutorial with me. We had many, many conversations about the search, search for the uh, GAN solution, uh, which uh, has always been missing. Uh, and one of the primary reasons it's missing is that his definition of time is incorrect. Uh, so in any event, um, this gentleman, uh, Ken Gerber, came to me, referred by Jim, uh, and he wanted to do a Daniel Code tutorial. I said, that's grand. I'd love to have you. Uh, and uh, as you do over the tutorials, you start to get a bit of a feel for who this person is and uh, what they're all about. And what uh, Mr. Gerber was about is he, w I think he had semi-retired. He was on a pretty big property uh, in Texas, if I remember correctly. Uh, but uh, he told me that um, uh, he'd been the broker for safety in the market uh, many, many years ago. Um, and uh, he'd, of course, been following GAN theory for all those years unsuccessfully um, and he'd uh, been referred to me by uh, Jim uh, because he wanted to know the answer what is the answer so I started on the tutorials with him um, and uh, to say he was reticent uh, uh, is to give give the word a nuclear force uh, he was monosyllabic uh, and you couldn't get anything out of him very tough guy. If you've been a broker all your life, uh, I guess in the, the States, uh, you become pretty tough. Uh, and he was a tough guy and nothing uh, sort of uh, brought any emotion out. And usually as you're working through the tutorial, uh, you can get a feeling from people. Is, have they seen anything like this before? Is this uh, different? Is this what they wanted? Is this <coughs> uh, exciting them? Is this causing emotion? Uh, and Nothing from Ken, no emotion at all, just nothing. Eventually, we got to the stage in the tutorial where while I'm teaching time, uh, I work through a period uh, of a chart with the uh, student. Um, and it's a, a work through. We say there's a buy signal, put the buy order on. Where does it go to? It goes to that point. But what people, people don't realize is we are basically in the market all the time. Uh, if we take a buy, it's not that we're getting out to target. There are some areas where we'd adjust the stops, uh, tighten up our stops a bit if we get a really big bar. Uh, but basically, we're in the market until we get a sell signal. We're in the market short until we get a buy signal. We're in the market almost all the time. Um, and uh, nothing much happened with Ken until I got to the stage that uh, I was doing a work walkthrough with him on trading time. Uh, and my recollection is it was on the Russell 2000. And with that chart, I'm going to show you one shortly. It's like buy here, sell there, buy here, sell there. Everything in the Daniel Code is a light switch solution. The signals in the Daniel Code are either on or they're off. And they're not something you have to think about. I've designed the whole program. Uh, if you can tell red from blue and count to three forwards and backwards, I can make you a super trader. So as we were working through this particular day, um, all of a sudden, uh, we put started to write down the numbers of our trading. And uh, whatever period uh, it was, it might have been a month, might have been a bit longer than a month, uh, but basically there were 18,000, 19,000 something in winning trades in 4,000 something in losing trades. <coughs> so there was a $15,000, $16,000 net profit over excuse me, might have been a month, might have been two months. And Ken, the man who had spoken fewer words than anyone I'd ever met before, suddenly came alive. And he was so excited. I mean, talk about love to see the money. Uh, wow, John, I uh, can't believe this. Uh, how can this happen? This is not possible. This return is not possible. I've been in this business 45 years. I've never seen anything like this. And on and on and on. I couldn't shut him up. He was so excited, 
he'd been looking for this all of his trading life and here it was in the Daniel Code tutorial, all of it. Well, what happened then? Nothing. <laughs> he never came back. He never replied to another email. Kenny G got what he wanted, Daniel Code time trading, and uh, he never uh, answered another uh, email from then on. I still had a couple more sessions I thought I would do with him, and he never responded. He had what he wanted. He had the answer to everything. And he was so thrilled, I promise you. He was like a little boy. He was so excited when he saw all the lovely money. And, of course, that's what trading's about. You get this thing right, it makes a whole lot of money very quickly. Uh, so uh, I can say with a high level of confidence, Kenny is now a true believer of Daniel Code. And eventually, after 30, 40 years of searching, he found the answer to everything. Okay. What I'm showing you here is the equivalent uh, to what I went through with Kenny. Uh, this is actually the S&PE Mini, uh, and this is a work through that I did with uh, one of our current um, tutorial uh, students, Bianca, uh, who's a lovely lady. She's with us today. Uh, and let's let me see if my man's arrived. I don't think he has. I'm going to put out a post uh, in a moment, folks, just to see if I can uh, let this chap know that his emails are not get be, are being returned. You can't get through with them. Uh, so uh, this is the walkthrough part of uh, the time trading syllabus uh, that I did with uh, Bianca last week. Um, and uh, it's not uh, uh, precise. It's not intended to be. Um, it doesn't have any account in there for slippage. It doesn't have any uh, qualification in there for the fact that we use a two-tick buffer on our buys and our uh, entries and losers. But anyway, uh, it returned uh, somewhere above 18,000 in 28 trading days. Uh, and that's the whole secret of time. So I don't ever tell people, most people start off by saying, tell me how much this uh, program of yours makes. Well, I always say you'll find out for yourself. Uh, I don't want to say what it'll make because I don't know what it'll make tomorrow. What I do know is these have been pretty, this is what you're looking at, is a fairly average stretch of uh, trading, a uh, nice bit of trading. Um, and the whole secret to the Daniel Code is that its losses are very, very tightly contained. Uh, so um, $18,000 plus in 28 trading days, one contract, pretty nice, isn't it? Uh, knock off 10% for slippage, if you like. Knock off 20% for slippage. What's the difference? It still is an enormous result of trading, and that's what our tutorial clients are doing every day. So if you haven't thought about it yet, uh, you should be thinking about uh, signing up for the Daniel Code tutorial and learning how to trade. Uh, all of you crypto guys out there, and there's very, very few of you I know, um, but there's no doubt it is... Uh, uh, a thing of great interest to many people, uh, and equally it's uh, not going away. Uh, so this is a chart that I've prepared uh, for a new client who's going to start learning to trade Daniel Code method uh, next week in the Daniel Code tutorial. Um, and this is Bitcoin. Uh, this is a daily uh, chart of the Bitcoin futures contract. Uh, and have a look how this market is so controlled by the Daniel Code price ratios. And that's not surprising. All markets work exactly the same with the Daniel Code. Forex works exactly the same uh, with the Daniel Code. Bitcoin works exactly the same with the Daniel Code. Ether works exactly the same with the Daniel Code. And on and on. King Prawns works exactly the same. Tiger Prawns is the futures contract, works exactly the same uh, with Daniel Code. Uh, so. Uh, if any of you know uh, folks who are interested in uh, crypto, tell them uh, they can learn how to trade it right here with me. Uh, and, of course, in the process of that trading, I'm going to say to them, you shouldn't be thinking of these markets as special. They're just another market. All markets do this all the time. Um, in fact, there are other markets that are a whole lot easier to trade uh, 
uh, than uh, Bitcoin and uh, Ether. Uh, but all markets are the same. They're all controlled by the Daniel Code uh, ratios, which are time ratios, which we get from price. Okay, so uh, if you haven't already thought about it, uh, you should uh, be thinking about doing a Daniel Code tutorial. It will make you a super trader. Uh, and if you can tell uh, red from blue and count forward and backwards by to three, I can make you a super trader. Uh, so do uh, shoot me an email, uh, reserve your spot or uh, ask me to send you uh, the, how the video tutorials work. It's very, very successful. It's also very pleasant. Uh, they're very enjoyable uh, teaching people this way. And uh, I'm thrilled uh, with to see, you know, when the penny drops, it's like, wow, nobody ever told me about this. And of course, nobody ever told me about it either. I had to find all this for myself, uh, as you will do. Uh, when you decide to do your Daniel Code tutorial, the first thing I'll say to you is <coughs> you're going to have to find this for yourself and I'll show you how. So <coughs> it's that form of knowledge that is so powerful. <coughs> Excuse me, a bit of coffee <coughs> went down the wrong way. Uh, very nice it was too. Now, <coughs> A proper understanding of time. This is my most recent article. It's called The Other Way. Uh, and I put the link up there for you to read. Uh, I'm amazed uh, how few people uh, have actually read the whole article. It's a heavy read uh, and it's a long read. It's about 16 or 17 pages, maybe 15 pages. A lot of charts. It's very detailed. But it is, I think, the ultimate word on how price affects markets and you should <coughs> I implore you make an effort to read it uh, it's on the Daniel Code website I put the link to it just above there um, and uh, or you can go to the Daniel Code website www.thedanielcode.com and you can <coughs> just uh, go to the articles tab uh, and you'll find it there very important you read it to understand time and while you're reading it you will find out all about the Daniel Code time cycles. Have a look at this. This is a basic Daniel Code time cycle on gold. And this chart covers almost three years, two years and eight or nine months uh, of data. <coughs> and there's some pretty wild moves in there. And all this has done is we've slapped a 29 cycle straight over the top of it. <coughs> and I've shown you <coughs> that every single turn of any importance has come at the expiration of a Daniel Code time cycle. Now, there are other turns uh, less significant. I haven't put them all on this chart. The purpose is to show you that all major market turns, without exception, happen at Daniel Code time signals. And those time signals are the expiry of a dominant trading cycle. Uh, if you're interested in that stuff, go back through my uh, webinars, folks, there's uh, a whole lot about I've talked about <coughs> time and the bigger uh, portions of time. Have a look at this. This is a gold chart. This is a gold chart from 2015. <coughs> and it's particularly, it's a very special chart um, because it has all sorts of things in it, sort of weird and wonderful things in it, good, bad and indifferent. So I use this chart when I'm teaching the tutorial. Um, and as you can see, we start off simply with uh, normal daily bars. Some of them are red, tells you they're inside bars. Uh, some of them are grey, tell you they're outside bars. Uh, and occasionally you can see a bit of a green slash above or below the bar. That's telling you that there's a gap there. Uh, and we're always very well aware of that uh, because you don't want to trade chart highs or chart lows. You have to trade true highs and true lows. <clears throat> and that means you have to understand what the difference is. Uh, so let's move on. <coughs> what I've done here, I'll call this the first retracement. <coughs> I've simply taken the Daniel Code uh, uh, retracement tool, which you, you all get if you do a tutorial, uh, or if you're um, subscribed to the DC website Pro uh, uh, curriculum. Uh, it's uh, 249 a month. If you're subscribed to that, you get this tool and you get the time Daniel Code time tool as well. Um, so you you should know what these sequences are that you're looking at. They're all time sequences. When we uh, start with the Daniel Code, <coughs> we start off from a historic document that has 15 lines. That's all there is to it. <coughs> and <coughs> from the 
numbers in there, uh, a little bit of basic math um, will give you these ratios. And our job then is to find out if they work. And they work so superbly to be hardly true, uh, which you're about to see a little bit of that now. So uh, there's, we've got two swings, as you can see, we're starting from that low. Uh, it's a big sort of consolidated sideways low. Uh, we've gone up to the uh, first important high, and there's another important high, which is uh, May the 18th, 2015. <clears throat> and now we've added that second important high. <clears throat> so two swings mean you have two lots of Daniel code retracements, which is exactly what you're looking at. Uh, now, uh, once we've got those on the chart, uh, we can pull those across. Uh, so that we can read them all and you can see them all sitting there. The first thing you'll notice is that some of them double up. Uh, in other words, you see the uh, black number 1191 and next to it the red number 1190.7 just about on top of each other. Uh, the same thing happens uh, further down uh, around 1171, 1172 uh, and further down 1131, 1132. <coughs> People jump on that and say, well, <clears throat> because you've got two different ranges uh, overlapping and agreeing at a spot, that's an important spot. Well, yes, it is important, but not for that reason. <clears throat> the reason that happens has nothing to do with whether it's stronger or not stronger. Uh, you can see of our uh, one, two, three <coughs> dominant highs here that we're looking at, <coughs> none of them are at a double uh, line. Um, this happens purely mechanically. Uh, it's no great uh, discovery of some trading system. Uh, and a whole lot of people believe it is. So uh, drop that out of your uh, uh, memory list. Uh, it happens because all market moves are fractals of previous ranges. So it's simply mechanical. Uh, if you're using the same tool to measure different ranges, you will get some overlapping in it like this. Uh, and it's interesting. Does it mean it's stronger? No. Uh, one of our, uh, our uh, highs uh, that we've got a sell signal on is at 10-15, uh, 2015. That's a double one like that. And both the bar before it and then the final high uh, have got target recognition. Uh, within eight ticks, we allow a 0 0.1 ticks for target recognition, which is on this market at that time. Uh, about 11 ticks and the highest we ever get on the upside here is an eight tick variance which is very nearly perfect and think about this if you look along the bottom of this chart uh, you can see these little light blue um, uh, diamonds with the letter R in it uh, and their rollover so what we're actually doing here uh, in May 2015 uh, we're working on I think that's probably the December contract no it's not it might both be June, uh, but uh, there are three different contracts in there. That that line in there, then you get roll over and you get the next high and the big uh, low down the bottom, and then you finally roll over to another contract altogether. So at that October the fifteenth high, where we get almost perfect target recognition on two bars, <coughs> one after the other, <coughs> to create that number, the program needed to know the May 2015 high, the early August low, and the October October 15th high. It had to know those numbers exactly and precisely. How did it know it? How did the market remember that? Can the market remember something five weeks ago or, or five months ago, I should say? Well, when you read the other way, the article, you'll see that the market remembers things decades ago and it remembers them perfectly to an exactitude there you are so let's see what happens here if we take off all the uh, various price levels remember these are time cycles that we simply put on the chart horizontally as price levels we get three cell signals at the three points where we got perfect target recognition by perfect i mean at or less than 11 tick variance that's our allowable on this chart 11.01 <clears throat> in all of these highs here we've got a variance of either seven or eight ticks <clears throat> and that is primarily caused by the fact that we're using three different contracts 
and we're not making any adjustment for rollover, whether there's a discount or a premium, uh, etc. Uh, so that was good. That's how it works. Have a look at this. This is the other side. You saw it working on the highs. Now look what happens when we put it on the lows. Uh, we get uh, three buy signals. <clears throat> and in all cases, <clears throat> what we've got is near perfect target recognition. Look at those lines. Put this on your own chart. Put your cursor on the bar. Read off what the low is and then read that against the Daniel Code ratio, which is the red line, uh, or in the last case, the black line there, uh, 1104.2. That market was running down. I remember trading it. We had a couple of big bars, two little bars, and then all of a sudden, uh, everyone was short. They thought it was going to the middle of the earth. <clears throat> and it ran down until it hit the Daniel Code black line at 1104.2. It stopped like it had been shot, turned around, roared up, uh, and in three days you made about 2,600 uh, US dollars uh, per contract simply for knowing uh, where to put your orders and your stop loss. Pretty wonderful stuff. So let me show you what's been going on lately. This is crude oil. Put it on your chart. Have a look at this concept that I keep, keep talking about, probably driving you mad now, uh, is, which is uh, target uh, recognition. Here's this uh, low uh, yesterday, uh, Wednesday, uh, at 77.62. Uh, and today, here's the low at 77.59. Where's that Daniel Code red line? 77.56. You see? Uh, that's why the market wasn't ready to turn yesterday. Today it's found the number within our target recognition. We can expect that to be followed through. Uh, here's the US dollar index. It's been some pretty emotional trading in the US dollar index. Look how precise it is. Uh, you can see there that it's sitting on a red line. In fact, today it's created a red line, a, a TO3 uh, and a blue line sell signal. The close of that bar is 103.190. Uh, 103, that was the close of, sorry, that's about four. 103, I'm dyslectic, 103.930. Uh, and the closest there you've got is 885. Uh, and this market moves in uh, 0 0.005 is one uh, tick. Amazing stuff, isn't it? But they all do it, every one of them. Uh, if this was happenstance, it wouldn't be happening. Uh, have a look with the S&P E-mini. Uh, we had a lovely big buy up, huge big buy up to Wednesday's close. For Thursday, we had, I put on here to show you a correlated TO3 sell signal. We had a sell order for the Russell. And all equities, US equities, uh, Russell, Dow, S&P and NASDAQ, and Germany's DAX are so highly correlated that a signal for any one of them is tradable for any other. In other words, <coughs> you could have put today short on uh, in uh, any of those markets, NASDAQ, uh, S&P, whatever you wanted. Uh, and they're all highly correlated signals, uh, all valid uh, so long as the trade is selected, which this one does. And it was a bit of a whopper, wasn't it? Uh, so uh, did you have any reason to get out at Wednesday's close? Well, by far the biggest bar on the chart you certainly should have been thinking about tightening up your stop a bit. Um, apart from that, that was full of emotion, that uh, high there uh, with the uh, last day of uh, reporting record, uh, reporting results. And NVIDIA had a complete blowout, sent the NASDAQ uh, into uh, stitches uh, and gurgles. Uh, and there's still a very strong bull bias in this market. <coughs> it's looking for, particularly in... Uh, uh, tech, big tech, supposedly uh, more than the others. Uh, there's a very strong belief that uh, they are just you know, they they can go to ever go forever to any price at all, uh, which I think uh, is not quite right. Have a look at this. This is gold for all you gold bugs. To three plus buy signal where it when it found the blue line, uh, and you can see how it's had a uh, a bit of a struggle in there to get to it. Uh, that it had a very important low last Thursday uh, at 1914.2. Just wasn't quite close enough for the market, uh, which had a little inside bar the day after. And then it pushed down uh, on Monday uh, all the way uh, down to 1913.6. Where's your Daniel Code blue line? 
1913.4, two tick variant, that's all. That set up the buy signal, this is a nice trade, uh, it's been certainly worthwhile. <coughs> this is copper, <coughs> we had the buy signal, same deal, it found the blue line, up it's gone, uh, and uh, for today we had a, a TO3 sell signal which was not elected, uh, but the market certainly weakened out under the influence of that. And uh, sorry about that. Uh, some of these uh, markets were not so nice. This is the Russell. Uh, we had the buy there. Uh, one, two, three, four, up four up bars. Uh, went pretty well nowhere. No, no, nowhere important at least. Uh, and of course for today, we did have a TO3 sell signal in the Russell, uh, which was elected. And you should take a look at the NASDAQ um, and um, uh, the Dow uh, to see how they reacted uh, through that correlated signal. Uh, and often you'll find that the correlated signal actually does better in dollar yield uh, than the uh, known signal. In other words, the signal is shown on the Russell. Uh, but if you took it as a correlated trade on the NASDAQ or the Dow, where it wasn't shown, uh, and let me check that to make sure I'm not misleading you. Tell on the Russell. That's right, that was just on the Russell uh, and and the S&P. There was a, a TO3 plus sell signal uh, on the S&P today. Uh, and there was also, I'm telling lies here, there was a sell signal, a correlated TO3 plus sell signal on the NASDAQ. Um, and uh, that's worth looking at, uh, folks. It, uh, that's where all the uh, excitement's been. Uh, and uh, it's had, it looked, looked very much like all of them. It was a nice move down today. Uh, anyway, okay, uh, let's keep moving with this. We've got some uh, people here. That's great. That's great. That's great. Uh, and uh, Greg saying the Russell's high today hit the blue line and reversed. <laughs> Bet no one. What have I got here? Bet no one was paying attention to the Russell. <laughs> yeah, Greg Palladini is a very sharp observer. Uh, let me see here what we're looking at. Here we are. Here's the Russell. Thanks very much. You're exactly right. Uh, the high, today's high in the Russell uh, was uh, 1883.7. Uh, the Daniel Code red line there. Uh, boy, I uh, need to have my glasses updated. Come on, fellas. Let's move up that way. That way. 1883.7. Uh, where's our number there? 18... 84.6 and 1883.0. Pretty cool, isn't it? There was the highs. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Very good. Indeed. Okay, let's move on. Uh, and Greg said, bet no one's paying attention other than the DC members. Yep, quite right. <laughs> oh, David Samuels, good to have you with us, David, again. Nice to have you. It's like the Torah market is read historically backwards, uh, forward, and um, diagonally, all of them. Yeah. Okay, keep moving here. Let's see what else we've got. We're going to run out of time. Uh, we're pretty close to time now. Uh, and I've had so much fun showing you this stuff. Uh, this is soybean, self explanatory. We had the sell today, we got the buy signal and acted accordingly. Uh, this is sugar. Uh, Big, big, huge, dramatic outside bar to, to elect the Daniel Code signal, wasn't it? Uh, and uh, look at this for silver. Uh, this is a very, very nice trade, incidentally. Um, TO3 buy signal was a TO3 plus just about the day before. Uh, and a very nice uh, trade in silver. Uh, this is T-Bonds. Uh, had perfect target recognition uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, you see where its uh, high was, uh, the uh, close. Uh, of the uh, T-Bonds on Wednesday was 120 caret 11. That little arrowhead is called a caret. Look where your red line is there, folks, from the Daniel Code signals. 120 caret 11, zero variance. Uh, and that uh, happens uh, often enough. It's quite wonderful. Uh, that shows you the exactitude uh, and the uh, 
precision uh, of all of Daniel Code. Uh, when you have a chance, uh, I suggest you go to Chart Archives uh, at our website. Um, they're all organized uh, uh, by date. Uh, go through a number of charts. You'll be amazed at how accurate they are, uh, and uh, you'll be astonished if you can ever find, I will be astonished if you can find a market that has ever turned anywhere except that it's Daniel Code numbers. Remember these Daniel Code target recognition is the final filter. It's almost impossible for markets to turn if they haven't met a target rec uh, recognition on a Daniel Code chart. Um, once they've had target recognition, uh, we don't say that that will cause a turn, but it's a preliminary step in a turn. And if we turn that statement over and say, markets don't turn, do not turn, unless they've had Daniel Code target recognition. That statement is running in about 92, 94% plus on back testing. It's a very, very persuasive argument. The dark target recognition should be the final filter of all your trades. However you're trading, if you're not trading Daniel Code, if you're trading something else, good luck to you. If you add the Daniel Code final filter of target recognition, you will improve your trading out of sight. Uh, and that's uh, it for me today, guys. Um, remember the business of trading futures in Forex is not to be right. The business is making money. If you haven't already, you're most welcome. Uh, to go to the website and start a free trial. If you have any issues, contact Terry at support of the danielcode.com. If you've had a free trial in the past, uh, the computer will likely remember you and won't want to give you another one. It's, it's pretty mean like that. Uh, but contact Terry, uh, he'll uh, clear that up for you. Uh, remember to uh, read and take seriously our disclaimer, folks. It basically is very, very easy to lose all your money trading if you don't know what you're doing. By the same token, it's very easy to make a whole lot of money once you do know what you're making. So trained or untrained, you either know trading or you don't know trading. If you'd like to become a professional trader or a full-time trader or even a part-time trader, contact me, jneedham at thedanielcode.com, and I'll be happy to show you the path to excellence, happiness, and wealth. And uh, that's me pretty much for the time, uh, folks. I've just seen... If I've missed anything, actually, he's going he's to contact me. Thank you for that. Uh, Gregory, we've got your comments. Uh, David Samuel, that's Dave. Dave's got that. And I'm trying to see if my guy uh, that I was looking for, uh, he keeps emailing me, and I can't. I keep replying. It keeps getting bounced back. His name is Tommy Lewis, uh, who, oh, uh, Rolf's arrived. Oh, you've been late getting in. Rolf, good to have you with us, my friend. Uh, very good to have you. Uh, okay. I, I think that's about all we can do for uh, Mr. Tony. I will, uh, with your indulgent folks, I'm just going to um, send a post which will go through here. Tommy Lewis. Bear with me, folks, please. Okay, now we can do that. We can send that to everyone. It'll be embedded in here. That's good. Right, here we are. Wonderful having you. Uh, anything uh, folks you're particularly interested in, uh, please shoot me an email uh, and I can work something up for you uh, at our next webinar, which will be in two weeks. Uh, in the meantime, good trading. It's uh, plenty of volatility in the market. Up and down, it's exciting. Uh, trade, catch it all while you can. Uh, and just follow the Daniel Code. It will keep you on the right side of the market all the time. Thank you for now, and bye-bye. Uh, Thank you, David. I'll take that advice. Okay.